Okay, I'm going to be telling you guys a little story all about my little company called Streamflix. Streamflix, I started off in 1990. It was a small company. We had a few hundred people using our online streaming service. We grew. Happy days. Our viewership went up. Now, we also noticed a trend in certain genres. We noticed that at certain parts of the year, like December, people started watching horror more. We saw a 30% increase. So we're guessing it was because it was like dark time of the year. We made a guess. That was the reason why. So our viewership increased by 30%. Now, how do we get to that in the first place? Well, we were using something called a data warehouse. It's a system which is used, which allows us to report and for data analysis. It basically takes data from lots of different sources, which um, what we have. So we have people, our viewers, the viewer data we have so what they watch we have other sources such as um, clips so people using other websites to clip our shows so we've got data from that so we've got our viewer data we've got other websites which clip we've also got data such as our subscriber information so that'll have like um, when they created the account we'll have their age, we'll have their location, so demographics we'll also have our content catalogue that'll be another source of data which will have our titles, our genres, etc. We'll also have um, our user interaction data. So how are they interacting with it? Are they using their phones? Are they using a website through um, say phone app or website? Are they um, finding us through Google? So how are they getting to us in the first place? We'll also have financial transactions data. So how are people paying? What are they paying? We'd also have our marketing data. So have any of our emails which we sent out, have people clicked on them to then lead to them subscribing. Same with social media engagement. So we have that data. Are people talking about us, mentioning us, tagging us? Are they clicking on things to get to our website to watch? So our trailer's working. So all of this is our data. We've got a huge amount of data for our data warehouse. So what will happen is all of this data would be fed into our data warehouse in the first place. <coughs> Based on this, we're able to come to the conclusion about the horror. And what we decided to do is we decided to increase our marketing budget we have a focus on horror, not Christmas, around December time. And we spent about 20% more, and we noticed that our viewership went up. So we were able to, from using this data warehouse, all this data being fed in, come up with this conclusion, <coughs> which allowed us to do better marketing campaigns, and it basically allowed us to create more profit more renewals. But here's the thing, we're having so much data coming in, in our story, that we're coming up with some issues. As time progressed, so as time progressed, the quality of our data was going down. We've got inconsistent data from different regions, so
for example, we have some in the US who are registering their date of birth of month, month, day, day, year, 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 year. Well, <coughs> in our UK, it's day, day. So this is making it really hard for us to actually analyze certain pieces of the data. Date of birth, watch dates, because our different regions are storing it differently. And what we need to do is basically we want to clean out our data. We want to make it uniformed. We also have lots of data in terms of lots of users who have registered but not active. In, we're thinking that it might be because they have made an account, they forgot their username and password and email, so they made another, <coughs> leaving the original one a dead account. <coughs> so what is it that we had to do? Well, we used something called ETL. So what is ETL? Well, it stands for Extract, Transform, Load Based Data Warehouse, DW Data Warehouse. So it's actually put into three different layers. You've got the staging layer, the integration layer, and the access layer. So what does this actually mean? What does this actually do? Well, it's quite in the ETL, so that remember is what we're doing right now, the staging layer is, you can say it's a temporary holding layer for raw data from different places, as we saw earlier, where you've got all the different categories like subscriber, um, marketing, viewership, all these different data coming in. So it will retrieve the data from the different sources, social media, etc. It's stored in its raw format. It's not been changed, it's not been cleaned or anything. It's then passed on to the integration layer. The integration layer is where it cleans the data like we talked about with the dates where we have DD, M, M, yeah, 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 versus M, M, D, D. It'll make them all the same format for example. It'll look at removing any deduplication, like duplicated records. So it removes duplicates. So it cleans out our data, enriches our data, makes the data better for us to use, makes it cohesive. It then passes it on to the access layer. The access layer is where users, such as the owner of Netflix, so you've got users, owner, you've got um, managers, they can query the data. That means search for different pieces of data for what they need to analyze. Marketing team, etc. And it'll be put into a format which is useful for them. So it will look kind of like that. Visual. We've looked at this before in terms of visualization of data. So this is known as the ETL data warehouse. So it follows those three steps. And this is all great. Okay, I'm gonna be telling you guys a little story all about my little company called Streamflix. Streamfix, I started off in 1990. It was a small company. We had a few hundred people using our online streaming service. We grew. Happy days, our viewership went up. Now, we also noticed a trend in certain genres. We noticed that at certain parts of the year, like December, people started watching horror more. We saw a 30% increase. So we're guessing it was because it was like dark time of the year. We made a guess. That was the reason why. So our viewership increased by 30%. Now, how do we get to that in the first place? 
Well, we were using something called a data warehouse. It's a system which is used, which allows us to report and for data analysis. It basically takes data from lots of different sources, which um, what we have. So we have people, our viewers, the viewer data. We have, so what they watch, we have other sources such as um, clips. So people using other websites to clip our shows. So we've got data from that. So we've got our viewer data. We've got other websites which clip. We've also got data such as our subscriber information. So that'll have like um, when they created account. They'll have their age. They'll have their locations so and demographics. We'd also have our content catalog that'll be another source of data which will have our titles our genres etc we would also have um, our user interaction data so how are they interacting with it are they using their phones are they using our website through um, say phone app or website are they um, finding us through Google so how are we getting to us in the first place? We'll also have financial transactions data. So how are people paying? What are they paying? We'll also have our marketing data. So have any of our emails which we sent out, have people clicked on them to then lead to them subscribing? Same with social media engagement. So we'll have that data. Are people talking about us, mentioning us, tagging us? Are they clicking on things to get to our website to watch? So our trailer's working. So all of this is our data. We've got a huge amount of data for our data warehouse. So what will happen is all of this data would be fed into our data warehouse in the first place. <coughs> Based on this, we were able to come to the conclusion about the horror and what we decided to do is we decided to increase our marketing budget we have a focus on horror not Christmas around December time and we spent about 20% more and we noticed that our viewership went up so we were able to from using this data warehouse all this data being fed in, come up with this conclusion, <coughs> which allowed us to do better marketing campaigns, and it basically allowed us to create more profit, more renewals. But here's the thing, we're having so much data coming in, in our story, that we're coming up with some issues. As time progressed, so as time progressed, the quality of our data was going down. We've got inconsistent data from different regions, so for example, we have some in the US who are registering their date of birth of month for month, day, day, year, year, year. Year. Well, <coughs> in our UK, it's day day. So this is making it really hard for us to actually analyse certain pieces of the data. Date of birth, watch dates, because our different regions are storing it differently. And what we need to do is, basically, we want to clean out our data. We want to make it uniformed. We also have lots of data in terms of lots of users who have registered but not active. In, we're thinking that it might be because they made an account, they forgot their username and password and email, so they made another. 
<coughs> leaving me original one a dead account. <coughs> so what is it that we had to do? Well, we used something called ETL. So what is ETL? Well, it stands for Extract, Transform, Load Based Data Warehouse, DW Data Warehouse. So it's actually put into three different layers. You've got the staging layer, the integration layer, and the access layer. So what does this actually mean? What does this actually do? Well, it's quite in the ETL, so that remembers what we're doing right now. The staging layer is, you can say it's a temporary holding layer for raw data from different places, as we saw earlier where you've got all the different categories like subscriber, um, marketing, viewership, all these different data coming in. So retrieve the data from the different sources, social media, etc. It's stored in its raw format. It's not been changed, it's not been cleaned or anything. It's then passed on to the integration layer. The integration layer is where it cleans the data like we talked about with the dates where we have DD, MM, yeah, 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 versus MM, DD. It'll make them all the same format, for example. It'll look at removing any deduplication, like duplicated records. So it removes duplicates. So it cleans out our data, enriches our data, makes the data better for us to use, makes it cohesive. It then passes it on to the access layer. The access layer is where users, such as the owner of Netflix, so you've got users, owner, you've got um, managers, they can query the data, that means search for different pieces of data. For what they need to analyze marketing team etc and it'll be put into a format which is useful for them so it'll look kind of like that visual we've looked at this before in terms of visualization of data so this is known as the etl data warehouse so it follows those three steps and this is all great so when we look at these three layers of staging, integration and access, which is all part of the ETL, what we've got to the staging layer and the integration layer actually happen outside of the data warehouse. So we've got to get our data ready, load it up, clean it all up, and then we put it into the data warehouse access layer for people to query. This takes time. It works, but it does take time. But we've had to progress, we've had to change. And that's where a different approach comes into play. We're not now gonna talk about the ETL, where we have the three layers and two of those layers are not in the data warehouse. We're gonna talk about something called the ELT, which stands for Extract Load Transform. So how does this work? Well, this is slightly different to the previous process because what we do is we've got our raw data. And instead of us putting it into the staging layer, we simply just put it into a data warehouse. <coughs> so we just dump in all our data in one go. That is the extract. We get all our data and we load it, so the extract load into our data warehouse. So we might have our streaming records, our user feedback, our marketing as raw data. We ex load it up and we extract it, sorry, we extract it and then we load it into the data warehouse. There's no need to put it into a separate staging area. Inside the data warehouse, we can have some really powerful tools to transform it. 
to put it into formats which we can use. So looking at like age groups, etc. Now this is quite new software. It wasn't around decades ago where we would need to use an ETL approach where we had to put it into staging, then <coughs> integration, and then having a nice access layer. In ELT, the tool is within it, within the data warehouse to handle all of this. It allows us to then do things like real time because it doesn't need us to clean anything up. We just have our users do things such as a user clicks on play, it then straight away puts that data into the data warehouse and then it allows us to view as an owner straight away this which this little dashboard which will change let's say by the second based on users and what their actions are. So we move towards this because we need a model which is going to be agile. We're using large data now. We're in the era of hundreds and thousands and millions of people using it. Therefore, to cope with that, we need to have a more scalable, <coughs> flexible approach. So ELT allows this to happen. It's less faffy. It quickly transforms that data. So here we are again with our two ways we can get our data. We've got the ETL, where we extract all the data. We then want to clean it all up, so we transform it. Takes a bit of time to do this. We then load it into the data warehouse and the data warehouse will be outputting it based on our queries. Or we extract it, we load it, and inside of the data warehouse it's got the tools which does automatically all the cleaning for us straight away meaning that the whole process is going to be quicker to do more agile so we've got this concept called data mining which is a part of computer science how does it work well it uses um, computational algorithms so code as well as stats so statistical models and it goes through loads and loads of data, so it uses algorithms and stats to analyze data, like millions of pieces of data. With the idea that we should be able to get some useful data from that, we're mining through this data. So by doing all of this, we should be able to come up with patterns, look at anomalies. So it's looking for patterns within our data. Anomalies. Anomalies. So, for example, a drop drop offs in viewership. That this stat, for example, Netflix knows it has ninety seconds to convince viewers it has something for them to watch before they abandon the service and move on to something else. So, they found that out through their data mining. That people would be on the website for a minute and a half, they couldn't find something, they'll switch over to like Amazon Prime. And the idea, the purpose of doing this is simply to see patterns that aren't obvious. It allows us to do investigations into these anomalies, for example. Why is it that a series all of a sudden drops off? It'll analyze key terms what people are using to search. All of these different aspects are used by businesses. So not only is it about <coughs> trend, not only is it about patents, but it's also about anomalies. One of those things was Avatar The Last Airbender where they had the cartoon version. They launched it on Netflix around nine years ago. The show was quite popular when it was running, but it wasn't super, super, super popular. So all of a sudden though, it created a whole load of new fans. They saw that the viewership for it started off low, and then it did like this whole bandwagon. Through this, they were able to make new decisions such as 
launching their own version of it through live action. But they were able to see all of this through their data mining situation. It was unexpected. Then they realised that other shows, which were nostalgic for some people, were starting to grow. And people start, a new generation started watching it, which meant that Netflix has started to invest in more old shows and revamping them. And finally, we've got this concept called big data. This term, big data. I want you to imagine trying to read every book in the world. <laughs> imagine that. Every single book in the world. Some of you can't even read one book, never mind every book in the world. The volume of that is going to be overwhelming. That's like big data for companies like Netflix. It's not just about having a lot of data like the viewer habits, social media interactions or reactions to things. It's not about um, feedback from users on like video streaming quality etc or what they've been watching what they're not watching it's more complex than all of this and here's the thing we've got some challenges which Netflix have to face with this big data the first one is capturing data imagine Netflix as a giant net trying to catch as much data as possible in the ocean. What they have to do is not catch as much as possible, but also as quickly as possible. So it's quick and large amounts of data, but without missing anything. So what Netflix have created is what's called a um, distributed ingestion, sorry, data ingestion system. So imagine the net which um, catches the data is really sophisticated. So no matter what, it catches this data efficiently, no matter how fast or where it's coming from. The net is so amazing, it can catch anything at any speed, anywhere without missing any fish going through with the net. So this distributed and gesture system allows them to capture data fast. We've then got storing data. So you've got the capturing of it, you've then got the storing. Once we caught all these fish, all this data, where do we keep them? We need a big space to store it. And they basically use Netflix, as we know, cloud storage, and what are known as data lakes. Which a data lake is used within ELT when it comes to we just extract and load the data it gets that data gets put into the data lake a data lake is just like massive amounts of storage which stores the raw data ready for us to use it and we won't ever run out of space from this We then need to analyze the big data and process it. That means do something with it. And this is going back to where we looked at data warehousing, etc. Um, the sorting, the cleaning of all our fish. Well, if we're using ELT, it does it for us, the data warehouse. It puts it into a format automatically using tools so that very quickly we can actually use the data for any purpose, multiple purposes. So this data, this big data, needs to be captured, stored, analyzed and processed. We then need to be able to have that data visualized and for us to query it. So imagine we've got a menu in, our, in a restaurant with all our fish on it and it's going to be too complicated too long we don't know what we want from that well basically what we can do with our big data by using tools again in our data warehouse is that we can actually make a simple simplified menu or simplified data and interactive 
meaning that we can find what we want immediately. Easy to view what we need or what we didn't know. Finding anomalies, etc. And finally, security and privacy. Well, without wanting to be too patronizing, because I'm not going to give an analogy for this, the data which we use when it comes to, um, or should I say the tools which we use when it comes to big data, is we use encryption, um, access rights, we have policies to make sure that we are compliant with global regulations just in case things go wrong. By using data mining, big data as well, we can do hyper-personalization. That's the end result of this. By data warehousing, data mining, through using big data well, we can do personalized um, viewers, viewerships. We can optimize, if it's Netflix, uh, content library. We can mean that we can have content which users are watching and not irrelevant shows. And we can also improve operational efficiency. If we're getting all this data about how long it takes for people to load up a movie, the streaming, the buffering, we can actually um, put in place more CDNs which help reduce the buffer. If we see that there's too much buffer in the Cayman Islands, and we're seeing that through our big data, we can actually buy some more CDNs which reduces that buffer, for example. The point being is that we are using our big data, our data warehouse, um, our data mining processes to put this data into an acceptable format. Feel free to pause the video, have a look at the notes provided by the exam board in this concept that we've just looked at. So it looks at data warehousing, data mining, and the idea of big data, large data sets.